What's up, math fans? They say I couldn't make my videos pop, I couldn't make them colorful, so I got some color markers, and I made them colorful. Hope you appreciate it. I wanna talk about graphing of the sine function, and if you're really curious and you put in the comment section or if I get enough requests, I will also do graphing of the cosine function. Um, but hopefully, if you learn anything from this video, you'll be able to do the cosine function on your own. So if you look at this part right here, from zero to 90, those are values that you should recognize. They come from special triangles, we call them special angles, and then I ask you to memorize the trig functions of those special angles. The trig functions meaning sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm just gonna focus on the sine for this video. So if you memorize them, you recognize that the sine of zero is zero, the sine of 30 is one half, the sine of 45 is radical two over two, the sine of 60 is radical three over two. And I have a video explaining why that's the case, but by now, you already know by memory. You can also double check on the calculator and you'll see that one half is one divided by two is 0.5. You'll see that radical two divided by two is 0.71 and radical three divided by two is 0.87. This is just to get a decimal approximation. So these are called exact values and these are just rounded to the nearest hundredth. So I have an idea of what it would look like when I graph it. Um, you'll notice I spaced out my angles based on what I know. So I, from zero to 30, I've skipped 30, and then I'm skipping by 15 degrees, 15 degrees, 15 degrees. So I skipped 15 degrees just because I don't know anything about it. I could put it on there and go to the calculator if I wanted to. It's not that important. You'll see why in a moment. Um, and then again, I go by 15 degrees, but then I skip to 180 because I don't know anything about 165. And it's not that important. Uh, again, you can run to the calculator for that. So you'll see that this is a quadrantal angle. This is my next quadrantal angle, and all the angles in between count as quadrant one angles. Q1, quadrant one. Here in brown, I'm dealing with quadrant two angles until my quadrantal angle 180, and then it becomes quadrant three angles in green until my quadrantal angle 270, and then quadrant four angles in blue until my quadrantal angle 360. Understand there's a connection to the unit circle. When you first learn unit circle, on a unit circle, if I have the initial side is always horizontal x-axis, the terminal side is movable. So if I'm closed like this, that's zero degrees. But if I spin all the way around, it's 360 degrees. So zero degrees I did in blue on purpose to show you it's the same as 360. So basically once I do that full circle, it then just resets, all the values reset. 390 degrees would be the same as 30 degrees, just resets. Those are called coterminal angles, which you learned about. All right, next, coordinates on a unit circle are x comma y, where the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. So on a zero degree angle where it's closed, my sine of zero is zero. So that I put a zero. If I open it to 30 degrees, here you see a 30 degree angle, that point where the terminal side hits the unit circle, that's radical three over two comma one half. So for this video, I'm only worried about the y coordinate. The y coordinate is one half. So the sine of 30 is one half. Boom, there it is, you knew that already. Move up to 45, so now I open it a little bit more. I look at this 45 degree angle, the coordinates, radical two over two comma radical two over two. So the y coordinate is radical two over two. Let's look at the 60 degree. That ends right here. That's one half comma radical three over two. I'm worried about the y coordinate, so the sine of 60 is radical three over two. What happens after I pass 90 is it starts to repeat. This angle is 120, and 120 minus one, or 180 minus 120 is 60. So this angle behaves the same as the 60 degree angle behaves because this is the reference angle. This angle behaves the same as 45, that's the reference angle. And then this angle behaves the same as 30, that's the reference angle. So you'll notice the values repeat. And then when I get over here, 210, well, 210 minus 180 is 30. So this matches up perfectly with this. Those repeat and those repeat, oh, excuse me, these repeat. So as long as you understand reference angles, you'll notice all the values just keep on repeating once I got into quadrant three. And then in blue, when I get to quadrant four, well, guess what? Those also repeat, those will match up as well. 
Huh, so why are these all positive answers and these are all positive answers, but look in the green and blue, quadrant three and four are all negative answers. I explained that in another video as well. If you remember a hint, all students take calculus. This means all the trig values are positive here. So in quadrant one, everything's positive. In quadrant two, the sign, which we're doing in this video, are always gonna come out positive. But only tangent is positive in quadrant three. So in quadrant three, the sign will come out negative. And you can always just do it on the calculator and you'll get negative answers. And quadrant four, only the cosine comes out positive, which means the sine would come out negative. So there's a bunch of negative answers there. All right, then we're gonna to start to plot them. So I already set this up for you. Here's my x-axis, which is the degrees. No, it's not. What did I do? Well, degrees is old school, and I hope you saw my video on changing degrees to radians. So I'm not putting degrees on a graph. I'm actually gonna put radians on a graph. It's just more common, especially in high school on, on state tests, they use radians in their diagrams. So instead of putting 360 degrees, I put two pi. Hopefully you remember pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. So instead of using 180, I put pi, and then, well, half of 180 is 90, so that's half a pi, or pi over two. And then three pi over two is your 270. So I just converted degrees to radians. Um, but if you look even closer, I did ch I cheated, and I chopped it up, because I initially did use degrees. So this was 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60, 75, and then 90 degrees. So I cheated to do degrees at first. So then I skipped 15, I didn't put a point there. But then when I got to 30 degrees, I plotted 0.5. So here's 30 degrees, here's 0.5. It lines up perfectly, or close to perfect. I didn't use a scale, I didn't use graph paper. If you are using graph paper, yours will come out even better than this. Notice my Y scale, my Y axis, I did it by tenths. One tenth, two, three, four, five tenths, all the way up to one. You can think about it as money if you want. 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, all the way up to a dollar. So my next point is going to be 45 degrees and 71 cents. So 45 degrees is here, 71 cents is here. There's my next point. Um, 60 degrees and then 87 cents. So that's going to be about here. And then 90 degrees, a dollar is my peak. Your peak, your highest point is important. It's a turning point. It's called a relative extrema or a maximum. There's a lot of different vocabulary words. It's also synonymous with altitude, um, amplitude, and we'll discuss amplitude in another video as well. Then I reach 90 zero, and then it starts to come back down and you can plot the next three points if you want, but I already know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go, um, actually I already used the brown, let me go to green. It's gonna curve back in like this. And then when I get to my quadrant four angles, it's curving back up towards zero, like that. And then like I said, it resets, so I start all over again if I wanted to, but I've already filled one full cycle or one full curve. So this is just now be repetitive if I continue. So that would actually, that's not necessary. You could have it there, it's not necessary. If you have infinite space, you would just keep on doing this curve over and over and over and over and backwards. So I would actually realize that it came from down there like that, and this was negative pi over two, but we don't have all day, okay? So, if you notice, there is a direct link between the unit circle. Every single point on the unit circle, the Y coordinate, now gets graphed here, and we create our sine curve. Same thing goes for cosine curve. Tangent has a little trick in it, but it's very, very similar. Um, all right, notice the highest point is one, the lowest point is negative one, because this is the graph of Y equals sine theta. Or you could say sine x, it's the same, it's a variable. So no matter what my value of x is, if I wanted to know 90 degrees, I would just go here, sine of 90, oh, it's one. Oh, I knew that, but that's a good reminder. Watch my other video where I explain what happens when I stretch the graph vertically, when I mess with the amplitude. All right, thanks for watching, see ya.